Former disgraced Congressman Anthony Weiner has gotten in trouble in the past for exposing himself, but now he may have just exposed himself to criminal charges. According to the Daily Mail, Weiner exchanged explicit texts and engaged in a graphic online relationship with a 15-year-old girl. Among those outraged by Weiner's new low was Governor Cuomo. He says, if the reports are true, it's possibly criminal and it is sick. And frankly, I've heard enough about Anthony Weiner. And I think that goes for all New Yorkers. To find out if that's true, we're joined by two New Yorkers. Criminal defense attorneys Ken Perry and Will Aronin are here with us now. They're from the firm Perry and Aronin in New York City. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks so much for having me. Good evening. Now, we've seen Anthony Weiner involved with sexing scandals before with adults, but now we're talking about a 15-year-old girl. He's in New York State. Uh, what is the law there? Is sexting a minor illegal there? There are a number of possible laws that they could um, attack him with. There's endangering the welfare of a minor, of course. There is um, uh, disseminating indecent material to a minor. Both of those have, well, the latter one has both felony and misdemeanor implications. And then, again, we don't know what was sent back to him yet. But if he had pictures being sent back to him, they're promoting sexualized performances by a child, again, which is a felony. And because of some very specific portions of New York law, some of those are considered um, sexually motivated felonies that actually have even enhanced punishments, including a possibility of lifetime commitment, lifetime civil commitment under Article 10. Weiner had a sexually tinged relationship online with a girl out of North Carolina. So d does the fact that she's in another state, uh, does that change anything? Well, it certainly can. The one major fear when any, whenever you're dealing with some sort of a child porn issue is the feds can come in. And if he's charged federally because this is interstate, the penalties and the punishments can just escalate tremendously. Sky high. So when it involves two states, that, that promotes it up to a, a federal charge? You know, child, child pornography can be charged federally in general, just based on the way it is done. It is always transmitted. Um, often it is New York State that ends up prosecuting it. But here, when it's such a public figure with governmental ties and someone who has sent and received from two different states, it wouldn't be shocking to see them come in. Okay. So, so what time and charges are we looking at on, on a federal level then? Huh. Federal level, you know, the, the, the sentence ranges because of the sentencing charts are pretty wide. I mean, there's a fair amount of time. On the state charges alone, at the least, he would have a misdemeanor, which would be a year in jail. At the most, he could have a D or more felony, which could be the D is up to four. If it was a C, it could be up to 15. I mean, the penalties increase depending what the level of interaction was. And again, we don't know that yet. And keep in mind, one of the major fears here is he may, if they went in for child porn, these are sex offender issues. But he may actually have to lifelong register as a registered sex offender. And the girl told her story to a magazine, so she did not report it to police. This tells me she likely doesn't want to press charges. Can police pursue an investigation even without her cooperation? Absolutely. You know, crime is committed. She is not of legal age to consent to do these things with an adult of a certain age. Um, her consent has nothing to do with it. You know, the best way to look at it is think of the laws against statutory rape. Um, a person who's under age cannot consent legally to a sexual act. It's the same thing here. Okay. So, in essence, to, to have the strongest case, it, it would be in prosecutors' favor for her to cooperate and, and come forward with this information, but ultimately, she doesn't have to. I would say that's correct. I mean, as, as a proof matter, it's always better to have all sides there. However, these things were done over, you know, the, over the line or, or over wires. They're, they can get this information through subpoena. So they really don't need her that, that much to be able to um, prosecute. The other scary part that I think a lot of people are missing on this is a lot of the other photographs that were sent in previous um, problems that he's had included his four-year-old child on the bed. Now, given that the child himself was not involved in any sex acts, but it's really coming very close to the line. 
He so, is, and, and there were reports that a lot of these pictures that Anthony Weiner was sending to this 15-year-old were done when his uh, toddler-aged boy was in the bathtub or, or elsewhere or, you know, laying behind him in a bed. So even though he wasn't involved in these acts, the fact that he was present or perhaps the, the father there was, was off doing something and not watching his child raises a lot of red flags. I do know that he was under investigation. I don't know if they've closed it up and they may now be reopening an investigation uh, looking further into him. Uh, speaking of his son, will this affect his custody and parental rights if he gets convicted of something? In New York, it is the best interest of the child, which is pretty much where it is everywhere. But if in fact the court would determine that his actions and somehow endanger the health, safety, morals of that child. He could easily have his custodial rights either truncated or completely cut out. Now, you know, we're not dealing with this right now. It's not, we don't represent him. We don't know all the facts. But I could easily see that becoming an issue. Now, while the texts uh, show Wiener was aware the girl was a high school student, does it legally matter if he knew she was 15 or not? I think it makes it harder on him. I mean, there is some caveats in the law where if you have a reasonable and proper belief that the person is over a certain age, it is an ameliorating or sometimes a defense to some of these actions. Again, as you said, he knew, so he can't take advantage of those um cutouts of, of those carve outs. You mentioned earlier that he possibly committed some federal crimes. Um, I know it's a federal crime to knowingly send obscene material through the mail or over the internet to a minor under the age of 16. Um, what is the definition of obscene? I think the Supreme Court once said, I know it when I see it. Um, <laughs> it's very broad. I would have to say that sexting probably fits into the definition of obscene. When you're talking about the acts you want to engage in with a minor, when you're talking about what you want that minor to do and asking for photos from the minor, um, you're, it's hard to argue that you're not pushing the bounds of obscene. It's especially because of the age. I mean, you know, if, I, if, if you send a picture of a penis to a 40-year-old person, it's different than sending a picture of a penis to a 15-year-old person. Right. Moving so, I mean, there is a balancing test here. Moving forward, uh, as defense attorneys, uh, what would you tell Anthony Weiner to do if you were representing him? What would be your advice for him? Well, stop sexting. <laughs> Let's hope none, nothing else comes out. We need to know how many of these are actually have actually happened because we just see new one after new one after new one. So number one is we need to get ahead of the story and need to stop uh, the, the trickling into the media of surprise after surprise after surprise. Uh, from that point on, it's a matter of defending against any issues. Um, and we need to see more facts. We need to see what was actually sent. He would probably argue that you know, no photographs were ever sent, no seeing material, no illicit material was ever sent. And that's a, a major defense. And Go ahead. I'm sorry. What do you think is going to come out of this ultimately? From what you've seen, do you think that prosecutors have enough evidence to move forward with an investigation and, and possibly pursue charges? I don't think that can be answered without knowing all the facts. I mean, one of the things I've learned many times over the years is, is what you hear from the prosecutor's office in their quasi-function of, of, I almost want to say entertaining the public, but at least putting out their side of the story, is that there's often a big difference between what they say they have and what they say they can prove and what they actually can. So without knowing more, I really I would be doing a disservice to answer that question. All right. Out of New York City, defense attorneys Ken Perry and Will Aronin, thanks for weighing in tonight, guys. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you.